Leon interview will give you Tom Locke, interviewed by Leon from Vormrand's Loss. Tommy, welcome. Thank you for, for sharing and pitching and let, letting us ask you all these questions. We have to learn today and find out exactly how, what do we do and how we handle and how we select the lucky pigeons. 80 years old, going 81 years old, long season in the pigeon game. How many years? When did you start them, Tom? I got my first pigeons. They were commons, they were pantails, they were the lot at four years old. Uh, I actually started racing pigeons, I mean, with other youngsters at school. Uh, when I was nine, ten years old. We used to go home during the, uh, the break, we used to have half an hour break those days. And uh, when I... Uh, you know, when we used to, like, go home, uh, it was a case of me not having a bicycle. I bought, used to get a, a lift from one of my friends who also raced with me, or, you know, raced with me as, as a child. We used to send these birds away on, you know, during the week for a toss, and then uh, over the weekend we would have our own, uh, like, little race or toss, whatever the case might be. When did you start flying? I actually started racing, I joined the Boxwood Club as uh, eight, uh, what, 17, 18 years old in 1944. I won my first race in 1945. Uh, this was with a pigeon, a, a red uh, checker cock. I still have his photo at the house. Uh, his number was P336. 1944. 1944, uh, I joined the tab. 1945, he won for me. Yeah, yeah. Then, I, well, I think like most youngsters, you, uh, you try and you want to win some more, now you want to win them all. And eventually, I mean, after I got married, then I started taking it quite serious as my late wife was very keen yeah. on the pigeons. She used to help me, she used to train them, she did everything. And in 1952, for the, uh, the, uh, the first races, that I could say I really won. I still have a photo at home there as well where I won five different trophies yeah. for the five races I won that year. And, uh, but going back, actually, I was a mediocre pigeon fancier, the same as you get so often today. Uh, all the years because I didn't have time to look after them and train them and do all that. In 1990, I decided I couldn't carry on with pigeons because it was too expensive. And the only way my uh, wife and I then worked this thing out that I should sort the pigeons out. I took them for the for a toss of 90 but not actually, no, I burned 100 kilos. I took them down to uh, Paris, which was 106 kilos, actually. And I liberated them, first of all, uh, one by one, and I found that they wouldn't leave. Then I started tossing 2-2. Two -two. That was their very first toss. They used to, you had to have them exercising at least a month around the house, and all had to be healthy. You had to treat them for canker. And, well, like breathing, because I feel that those are the, are the two main things, those are the two things that still mess pigeons around today. And uh, out of my 104 that I took for that toss, after three days, I had 51 back. In fact, I lost more than, just over a half. There I went through and I found that I had one pigeon that youngsters and grandchildren were the ones that had all come back or practically all come back and the other birds youngsters I lost. So I went in and 
And of the 15 pair of birds I had, I killed 10 pair. And I had five pair of birds. And after that, I became uh, one of the top pigeon fanciers in the THU. So you feel that was part of selecting the whole... That whole was... Process. That showed you which birds were really the intelligent pe uh, pigeons that you could carry on with. Yes. Yeah. That is... Uh, what was the foundation in? The foundation in the number was 4875. 4875. She was a, a 1982 pigeon. This pigeon... I was actually asked by one of our old fanciers uh, who had just bought a loft of 120 pigeons if I wouldn't swap him for he wanted two youngsters I had just bred uh, or birds I had borrowed from somebody else and uh, I let him have these two and he said to me right select yourself two birds in this loft I went in I said, I only want one pigeon. I picked up the one pigeon and uh, I took her away then with a cock that he said, I must take him. When I got home, I threw the cock up. I didn't want him. And this particular hen then turned out to be the greatest pigeon I've ever had. In fact, I think one of the greatest pigeons that has ever been in South Africa because I called her my foundation hen because her youngsters were the birds I used as my, uh, uh, you know, as my own uh, foundation birds. Yeah, about all my like pigeons. Yeah. Uh, Manier uh, 13.